Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me to be here, we have Stuart. Hello. We have Eugene. Hello. And we don't have Amy. She's off doing other things. So it's just the three of us. So this week we are doing episode number 90. And we are talking Killjoys and Dark Matter. As well as some Supernova news, some, uh, some what's it called? Bloody San Diego Comic Con news, and all sorts of other cool things. So sit down, relax, and. I'm still confused as to why people listen to this. But they do, so hey, whatever. It's, it's all you guys. <laughs> all for you guys. So let's start, kick it off with the return of Killjoys. So Killjoys came back about a week ago, a little bit under that, um, to a fairly impressive return, I thought. Um, I agreed. Yeah. Um, so we sort of left off Killjoys with... Um, one of the guys being kidnapped by the old guy, whose names I can't remember. Mean <laughs> names, <can't> remember. damn it. <laughs> See, this is why Dark Matter is so much better, because they just have numbers. Yeah, it's so much easier. <laughs> Mind you, I can never get the numbers right, but that's beside the point, damn it. So yeah, so anyway, um, so he's, he was kidnapped at the end of last season. We pick up with him escaping and breaking back into get back at the boss, the, the big guy from, the big bad from last season. Turns out he is actually hallucinating while being converted into a level 6. Um, but, and level 6 are, yeah, I call hacks, just saying. <laughs> so... What? And the it's, like, it's hats. It's not that much cheating. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of cheating. And, um... So... They... How do I put it? Wibbly wobbly complicated stuff. Um, Tell me why me? Tell me why me. No, no, no. What happens is they discover that he's on a planet, but they can't get down to him because they need a shield. So they go to another planet with a gambly dude with a... To find the shield generator from a gang that used the planet to hide from the cops when the heat got too hot on their raiding parties, and then they disappeared, and something like that. Hey, <laughs> hey. Yeah, that's probably the probably the best way to describe it. Is it's actually like really complicated and silly. Yeah, it's, it's a tad convoluted, tiny little, incredibly large amount. Um, and then, anyway, so they go around looking for the MacGuffin that allows them to break through the, the atmospheric shield. Um, the first time they try, they don't have the MacGuffin, and they almost die, so that was funny. Um, so anyway, they get the shield doodad and find out that it's actually connected to a chick who's a mod. She's got all sorts of cool upgrades and stuff. Including the most badass robo gun you've ever seen. Just this giant ass gun that sort of her arm comes off. She puts her arm on. And what'd you call it? Delilah or something? I can't remember. She has really uh, yeah, I can't remember, but it was a, like a funny name. Gave it a like a really cutie sort of cute sounding name. It's like what the hell? She puts it on, it's just a just a triple multi barreled gun at the end instead of a head, it just goes Zzz! it just shoots everything. So that was pretty funny. Uh, it sort of reminded me of um, Replicata when she had the sword on her arm. Similar sort of thing, but a gun. And so they es eventually escape out of the place where they find her because she's got the shield embedded in her and get back to the planet. Get In the meantime, the other guy's been in trying to... The other guy's trying to be upgraded to level 6, but he rejects the green goopy stuff. He's immune to it or something. Which is like the first time that's ever happened. 
and um, that's when the big boss guy, who's... I'm trying to... Oh! I know where I know him from. Sorry. Mental blank on where I... This guy reminds me of the dude from um, Sucker Punch. The old guy from Sucker Punch. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the same guy, but that's, that's who he reminds me of. So, the old guy Sucker Punch Man, the bu- who turns out to be a bus driver at the end of that movie because I, who the fuck knows. Anyway, he eventually goes, hmm, you know what, maybe this guy being too Im- immune to this level 6 thing isn't necessarily a bad idea, so I'm going to take him with me. Um, shoots all the scientists that are there to cover his tracks and they attempt to escape. Um, in the process, um, old guy gets captured. Sucker Punch Man gets captured by what we re- is revealed to be the new Big Bad, who is actually an organization that's above him. So, so he es- but he escapes with the Asian guy, Asian, I- Native American. I, d- I don't know. What was that guy? The other guy, the, uh, the friend. Yeah, no, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Yeah. I apologise if I... Because I've probably just offended every person that listens to this show. I apologise, <laughs> but... Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, I, I, I'm just what I do. If I'm not offending people, I'm not doing a good enough job. Anyway, so... The other guy... Oh, it, it annoys me. I'm, she's... Uh, anyway, not the point. Um, the point is to escape with him and get back to the ship. They turn around... Shoot him square in the face because he's secretly a level six, and they're just like, "What the hell? He was our friend. No, he was a level six. Watch, bang, heals himself." They're like, "What the hell?" So yeah, so level six apparently allows you to heal yourself. Just, just pure hacks, pure fucking hacks. Um, so they escape and get off the planet. Um, the you see sucker punch man being frozen in carbonite being dragged into a room somewhere well not really frozen in carbonite but frozen in frozenness um then they sort of go back to where they set most of season one which was that sort of the slummy sort of areas and it's all under full quarantine um then the guy they just rescued reveals that he was actually involved in a what was meant to be an old memory from the surface of that planet of the main Killjoy chick fighting alongside Sucker Punch Guy in some sort of rebellion thing? But she doesn't remember <laughs> it. Um, so we're not sure if it is a flashback or if it's something else entirely. We don't know. Um, but yeah, it's it was an interesting sort of spin on the concept. So yeah, so... Overall, Stuart, how did you find that episode? Uh, I enjoyed the episode, actually. Uh, I know I know, I definitely prefer Dark Matter over Killjoys. Yeah. Last year. Uh, after watching the two episodes, I think Killjoys had the better return. Yeah, I, w- I, would, I would definitely agree. Um, we'll get to Dark Matter in a minute. Um, but I think that was... Yeah. Um... I definitely agree Killjoys had the better return. It definitely sort of set up the... This is the stakes now. A lot better than what Dark Matter did. Dark Matter doesn't really have... We'll, we'll cover that when we get to it. We'll cover that when we get to it. But yeah, so yeah. Killjoys set up the new big bad for the season. is a new, higher-up organisation than what they were ever th- knew was there. They sort of revealed that um the old slummy area they were hanging around in last season is now under full lockdown quarantine that the organization the company or whatever the hell it was called that sort of runs the killjoys knew that that bombing was going to happen in advance it did nothing to stop it and um a heap of other sort of really cool points that sort of set the tone for the season is um, straight off the bat it's really sort of oh this is either going to be really good or really bad and i'm edging towards really bad (laughs) so yeah so I, I really enjoyed it. I would probably give it... It's a solid return. So... 8 out of 10? I think it's fair. Yeah, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 is fair. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to the rest of this season. They've 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 put the groundwork down to... Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be good. Um, so, let's move on to... Oh, sorry. 
Um, Eugene, you haven't seen these yet, have you? No, I've never seen Killjoys or Dark Matter, so I'm just listening. Ah, right, cool. Just figured I'd just double check before I forget to ask you like I normally do. <laughs> if I've seen, seen them, I would have piped in, no problem. <laughs> So, anyway, moving on to Dark Matter. Now, we, we just said a minute ago, Dark Matter definitely had a weaker return, but I think that was less to do with the series and more to do with where they are, if you know what yeah. I mean. Um, now, comes back with them in prison, and they've sort of... Some of their identities have been revealed, some of them haven't, and uh, they sort of get stripped down and thrown into Gen Pop, with um, the guy that changed his face and the young girl getting taken to civilian quarters as opposed to the actual prison proper. Um, turns out that the guy that changed his face is secretly a gajillionaire and his lawyer turns up just out of the blue and um, yeah, sort of protects him. Girl, he gets protected by the by the guy that betrayed them, and the others sort of work their way through Gen Pop, kicking the crap out of people. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much just pretty much the entire episode in twenty seconds. It was just it. Uh, it felt really. Oh, what's the word to describe it? Prison breaky. All over. Or I was going to say all over the place. Yeah, it did. It. Yeah, it, because of the way that the crew has been divided, there's you've got three of them are in the hold, in the actual prison proper, um, and it's a multi-gender prison, so males and females are just sort of running around and together, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so, look, you've got the android is currently being serviced, and they're trying to access the data in her, and she's like, well, if you try and do that, I will just format myself, have fun getting nothing, and um, they're like, you are, you're our property now, why won't you listen to us? Because I don't like you? <laughs> and they're like, what the hell? Fucking <laughs> androids. Um, the, the girly and um, the rich guy... And the, the black guy, who turns out to be a secretly a FBI sort of cop dude, are all sort of in crew quarters and they're sort of chatting. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, still... I don't know if I like that term. What? I don't, th- I don't know if I like making him a cop. I don't think it worked. Uh, um, it, was, it was interesting. It's an interesting spin. Um, I very highly doubt he's going to stay a cop. I'm just wondering how long <laughs> it's no. going to take them to break out of that prison. The unbreakable oh, prison, it... I give it four episodes. Five episodes tops. Really? I was going to give it three episodes. Yeah. Well, the Stargate guys are known for only having... Like, if they have a big issue like this, getting out of it within sort of three or four... Like, two or three episodes. Of, um, like, even the when Atlantis was adrift, that was only really two episodes. Yeah. Um, but I'm sort of hoping they drag this out a little bit longer. An unescapable prison that they break out of in two or three episodes, to me, would be a little bit like, eh. Whereas if it took, say, three or... F- if it took, say, four or five, um, I think five being sort of the most, would be, like, right on the limit of being able to stretch it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. Uh, oh, man. Actually, Stuart, you know what? I'll let you do the rundown on this episode. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, basically, um, they do a recap of season one, um, then it wakes up with, oh, I've got to remember the numbers now. <laughs> oh, jeez, it's hard to remember. Uh, one... Or is she two? Is the chick one or two? I can't Jeez, remember. I, cannot. Anyway. I don't remember. Anyway, main, main, main captain chick, Mal. We'll just call her Mal. <laughs> what? She's Femme Mal. Gonna... There's no way she's not Femme Mal. Just saying. <laughs> but where's Wash? <laughs> Sorry, too soon? Wash is the android. 
Can I don't feel she care that much of, you know, I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm just saying, we, we covered this last season. You've got Girly is Kaylee. Big guy that gets the shit kicked out True, of the that's episode. that's alright, we did do this. Is, um, Jane. The guy that changed his face is effectively the Doctor. Um, I can't remember who we decided the black guy was. But anyway, that's not the point. We've, we've already done this. <laughs> Go back and listen to the our episodes in archive if you want to hear the earlier stuff. Um, so yeah, they wake up in prison, uh, they are getting decontaminated and stuff. They get stripped down. Did it need to mention that? Yes, we did. What? It's not no, no, it didn't. It was the highlight of the episode, damn it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, what? Hi. <laughs> so, they still have their underwear on, just in case you're wondering. It's not like they're totally naked or anything. Because then they turn, cause it turns around and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, that, that girl that's been hanging around with you guys, yeah, she's 16. They say that later on in the episode. It's a little bit like, ooh, yeah, that's um, slightly awkward. <laughs> Moving right yeah. along. Moving right along. Glad no one tried to do anything. Yeah. Well, they did a couple uh, of times last season, if I remember correctly. I think the coolest, I think the coolest thing actually about the episode um, was sort of the uh, the virtual reality world. Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling cool. that's gonna. I have a feeling that's gonna come into play majorly. Oh yeah. Just throw all the guards in there. Oh no, no, it's all the way they described it that it can do stuff in there without physically getting hurt. Yeah. Someone's going to get interrogated. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, rich guy go go goes back just trying to get all his paperwork so they can send him home. Ends up getting killed by evil rich guy. <laughs> yeah, right at the by end. E by evil twin self. Yeah, right at the end. I was like, oh, he's back. I forgot about him. Um, Wrecknet dude gets his butt kicked. <laughs> oh yeah, he he gets his butt kicked. Um, Fent Mel jumps in. They punch on for a bit. That was a pretty cool fight. Um, that really didn't end up how I hoped it would end up. But that's not the point. <laughs> and the point is that's what the holodeck's for. <laughs> it's too early in the morning for this. <laughs> Sorry. For those who are wondering, I've been listening to way too much god awful movies. Just way too much god awful movies. If, if you want a funny podcast that is a hundred kajillion times better than this one, god awful movies. It's so, so funny. Anyway, um, moving right along. So, they have a bit of a fight over the the meal card, and then they get thrown in solitary, which then reveals the hologram area dealy thingy, which then they sort of become <coughs> friends? Sort of not? I'll call them, friend I'll call them frenemies. Frenemies, yeah, they become frenemies. Um, sort of a, we could use her to get us out. Um, the Asian guy starts a riot because he's like, screw this shit, I want to see what happens when there's a riot, um, to work out what they're sort of right response is turns out it's an incredibly loud incredibly annoying noise that made my birds <laughs> freak the fuck out just big time <laughs> seriously it's this high pitched whistle noise that sort of overwhelms people and knocks them out the problem is in the show the it is quite loud and quite high pitch which made my birds go oh my god there's a friend out there make all of the noise <laughs> oh god damn it. shut up birds no one cares um, so he was sort of sussing that out. The other guy was just trying to have a meal. He just kept getting his ass kicked by different groups. <laughs> Every time he tried something, it just didn't end well. Um, eventually he was taken to the medical wing and they're like, oh, and the guy who was in there's like, yeah, this place, you get all, you get really good food in here and all this sort of stuff. And, um, the best part is if you hurt yourself with, with different things, you can spend different amounts of time in here. It's really great. 
It's like, yeah, you know what? That's a really good way to scam the system. Goes back, gets thrown on menial labor, gets it, um, sees that he's got a clothing press, burns the crap out of his own hand. Uh, he's like, oh yeah, I didn't realize that I shouldn't have my hand in there when I put the hot plate thing down. It's like, oh wait, where'd the other guy go that said he was going to be in here for a few days? They're like, oh yeah, him. He, we found out that he was actually hurting himself, so we've decided to put him in psych. And he's like, um, yeah, my hand's better, thanks, bye! <laughs> Gets the fuck out. That see that was probably my favorite part of the episode. Just like the, the comedy is like that. That really was. His, he, you could just see in his in his head he's just done the, oh crap baskets. <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah, so he sort of GTFO and got out and and the medical guy's like yeah I really like a proactive sort of sort of attitude to getting out of this place. I'm gonna definitely note that down in your report. He walks out the medical guy's like do 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 do. So okay, seems legit. Um, so yeah, they're, I, I suspect, okay, and yeah, and so it effectively backwards and forwards with the lawyer and the girly and them explaining different ideas, and then right at the very end, as the credits are about to roll, you see the door open to Changey McFace guy, and then <sighs> in walks the, in walks the original and just goes crack, 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 kills him. Turns around and walks out. Now, to me, that says that how how did this guy get into this prison to kill him? No, no, he's not on the prison. He's on the planet he's on at the, this point. He's on the planet, is he? Oh, that explains it. Um, yeah, yeah. He, they transferred him down to the planet. That's right. And then, and then he was waiting for um, leave papers to go home. That's right. Which then makes a lot more sense of how he got to him. Yeah. Which still begs the question, how did he know he was there? Yeah. Um, my 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 theory is that there's a, he's he was bugged, but the question is where was the bug? Giggity. Not it could be like a molecular level bug that Nightwing uses, like where you drink a lot of where you drink water and it like it goes into your bloodstream. Giggity. Sorry, I'm just in a mood to torment Stuart a little bit because we don't have an Amy here to keep us on track. So, oh, this is gonna be a long ass podcast. <laughs> so, how do we think that they're gonna get out? I think they're gonna. Jerry- I think they're gonna um, rig the um, the a- the VR area and somehow trap everyone inside it. I think they're going to. Um... Or crazy, or crazy McChangey face dude comes and gets everyone out. Yeah. Nah, I. I think they're going to. Use the sonic wave against the guards. Because that's a fairly sort of standard tactic for the Stargate writers, um, and since it's those guys that are making the show, it's fairly simple to sort of look at how they attacked problems in the past and predict how they're going to do it. Um, they're going to. They won't be able to steal the, the, the earpieces, but they'll do something which will change the frequency of the noise so that it only affects the guards. Oh, so like a, like a, a, a reverb. Yeah, pretty much. Take, which takes the guards out. Um, from there, they'll then use their knowledge of... And Gurley will probably be the one that does that. Um, she'll, she'll, she'll hack the hacking to... To do that. Was she taken somewhere, so... Um, yeah, well, she sort of was, but... I still suspect that she's not that far away. Um, either her or the android. Depending on what happens to the android. It probably makes more sense. Yeah. Um, then you've got... Um, the black guy will definitely help them escape. Like, he'll regret dobbing them in and help them escape. He's, he's already heading down that path. Um, especially with Gurley being taken, and then they'll probably spend um, the next episode or two after they get out getting Gurley back. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the hell they're going to do with Mr. Shot in the Head, because he is pretty dead. <laughs> unless they're going to bring the... Unless they're going to bring evil, the evil version of him onto the ship. Which would be interesting. Um... So yeah, that's my prediction. 
Still don't exactly know how they're going to get out, get out. But, yeah. What would be interesting is if they turn the inside of the holodeck into the prison. And sneak people into it without them realising. I don't know how the hell they'd pull that off, but that'd be an intriguing way to go. What about you, Stuart? What do you think they're going to do? Uh, well, see, that's why what I, what's I saw, thought of when I said they were going to rig it. <laughs> yeah. Like, somehow everyone's going to act... It, 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 somehow, um, the prisoners or the guards are going to... Uh, uh, are going to end up in there. How, I'm not sure, but somehow they'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's move on to... last couple of weeks have been some really big announcements for Oz Comic Con Brisbane, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. Actually, in a couple of months. Since yeah, I say, um... Yeah. It's on September the 17th, 18th. Um, and they've had a big cancellation, which made me cry a little. And then they made a guest announcement, which, to be honest, I've already seen, so I'm a little bit like, eh. Not really worried one way or the other about it. That's right, he does love down here, though, doesn't he? What? He does love coming to Australia, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Um, so, anyway, let's start at the top of the Oz Comic Con list. We have... Um, this is what who's been announced so far. Now, Amanda Tapping cancelled. Amanda, you're a goddess. Please, we beg you. Just one year. I don't give a shit which year. Just Supernova, Oz Comic Con, Gold Coast, or Brisbane. I don't care. Just, just, just please. I beg you. Um, pretty sure she's got an exclusive contract with Oz Comic Con, so she won't be able to go to Supernova. But they said that about Chris Judge, and well, we know where Chris Judge has been recently. <laughs> he's been doing everywhere. Yeah, he just he just doesn't give a fuck. Um, so anyway, so let's start with the list at the top. We've got the Ashmore Twins. Aaron and Sean. So, we've also got... I saw, I, 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 for the first couple of guests, because they did twins, I was like, are they going to get the Weasley twins? Are we just going to have a twin fest? Twin fest, oh god. And then, you've, speaking of the other twins, we've got Charlie and Max Carver. Um, and if you really want to push twins, we've got, we've got Mitch... No, I won't, I won't go there. I was going to say, we've got Coldwell and Shepard. <laughs> Sorry. Colonel, Colonel, Colonel. Um, so you got, you've also got Maggie Roswell, Daniel Portman, Keisha Castle Hughes. Is that right? Yes. Stuart, go. Or Kesha, it's one of the two. Yeah, Stuart, you get the next one. Oh, why do I have to say Kesnia Solo? It's not that hard. Because I look at that and I'm like. Because uh, my brain just doesn't process a K followed by an S. It's just not a thing that happens. My brain just like, nope, I quit. Um, Rachel Minor, Charles... Mario! Oh, God. Charles... If, for the reason I said Mario, Charles uh, Martinet is the voice of Mario. Yeah, I know. Mario! That's why I was sort of hanging on it, waiting for Stuart to go, It's me, Mario! Um, then you've got... Mitch Pelegi, which is Coldwell, amongst Colonel Coldwell from Stargate Atlantis, amongst other, lots of others. Um, as well as the assistant director from X Files. Assistant director from X Files, the grandfather from Supernatural, the list goes on and on and on and on. No, and on, no, no. On. Um, and you've got Joe Flanagan, who is Colonel Shepard from Stargate Atlantis. Um, Shepard. Now, I've heard rumors oh, right. that Shepard, Joe Flanagan. Had, I've heard Joe Flanagan from. From Supernova, from Stargate Atlantis, can be quite um, dull at the dinners. So, <laughs> anyway. uh, what was he? What was he here last that year? Noise. What was that? <laughs> it was it was a boom in my, my area. Uh, Damn, that was quite loud. I'm assuming it was a Fourth of July thing. Yeah, well, I'm not seeing any fireworks. Yeah. Mm. Um, was he here last... I was trying to remember if Joe was here last year. No, uh, it was a couple of years ago. He did Supernova. Uh-huh. I think he did the last Supernova before they left the RNA showground, if I remember correctly. Ah. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah. So, that's who... There's, and there's also some comic book guys. But, yeah, the one... 
the ones I'm most excited about so far is definitely um, the Ash Mario. Wars. Mario and Mitch. Not so much Joe, because I've already met Joe, but I'm definitely going to get a photo with Mitch, Joe, as uh, McKay, and with, um, what's his face, Ashmore, as uh, my S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Because he's X-Men. So... Pretty sure that was Sean. Yeah, Sean. Yes. Was yes. It, was it Sean? Yes, Sean was Bobby. Yeah. So. I know, it's hard to say. It's like, uh, yeah, no, Sean was Bobby. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. And then right, moving got... on to Supernova Guests. Yeah. Okay, Supernova Guests. Supernova has... Dropped Drop a, the gauntlet. To, oh, to say they've dropped a few bombshells doesn't quite cover the bombshells they have dropped. Um, we'll leave the first two on the list until last. Because, oh, okay. Because I'm just mean like that. So you've got Claudia Wells from Back to the Future. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to get her to sign my Back to the Future cars. Um, Lucy Hale, who's from Pretty Little Lies, Canadian Story, Once Upon a Time, it's a, a Cinderella Story, Once Upon a Time. Once upon a song. God damn it. My brain is just not friggin' working. It's a horrible movie, don't worry. Yeah, that's why my brain doesn't work. It's like, it's like it's so horrible at breaking the brain. Um, then we've got somebody who's coming for Stuart. Yeah. Who's coming for Stuart? Steve Blum, the voice of, Z- of Zeb from Star Wars Rebels. Makes yeah. me so happy. And then we've got Veronica Taylor from Pokemon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Sailor Moon. And Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Do you know who she is in, po- in Pokemon? She was Misty, wasn't she? No, oh, she was Ash. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's come, she's come over a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Gold Coast, Melbourne, 2014, and Perth, Sydney, 2015. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Mary Elizabeth McGlynn um, from Ghost of the Shell, Cowboy Bebop, and Naruto. Who was she in Naruto again? I think she was, um... Um, uh, um, Kuronai Sensei. Who? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. She plays... Because, uh, because Jody wants to go, me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then we've got the it's big like, well, I know what cosplay you're busting out for, huh? <laughs> yeah. Then we've got the... Now comes the gauntlet. Oh, yeah. Now, this is the moment that Supernova effectively looked at Oz Comic Con and said, bring it. Yeah. We have Jason Mewes... And for the love of God, if they bring him out and not Kevin Smith, I will force choke them. Well, they had Kevin Smith last year, remember? They had both of them last year. But they didn't do signatures or anything. Yeah, well, they did a show, that's right. Yeah. He's actually, as far as I know, he's actually doing signatures. Yeah, he no, is. I thought, I thought, no, I, I thought Kevin Smith was doing signatures last year, and then they both did the show. Um, I don't think Kevin Smith did signatures. Because I think he sold a couple of things that were pre-signed, but that was it. Okay. I don't think he did signatures. Otherwise, I would have been just sort of like, oh my god, blah, blah. But I did not have, <laughs> like, the $300 needed to get a Kevin Smith signature thing. I was like, yeah. yeah no, fuck yourself. Um, so, but seriously, if they bring out Jason and they don't bring out Kevin, that's a bitch slap. But the big news, the, the, big, the big kahuna... Nathan Fillion is in the house. Now that Castle is gone, we get Nathan! Yay! <laughs> and, to be honest, if it comes down to Nathan or Joe... It's, that's, we all know it's going to be Nathan. It's a no contest. Nathan Fillion all the, all the way. So, um, Nathan versus Amanda, on the other hand. <laughs> that would have been a tad more annoying. So... So, so I'm looking forward I to... I still think Oz Comic Con have someone big up their sleeve. They're far from announcing people. I know. They're, they're, they're always announcing new people. Um, still find it amusing I'm blocked on their page. Yeah, well, I did. I, I applied to be a volley for Oz Comic Con. Uh, you never know. You could end up Ooh. babysitting Joe. Well, no, I put down, because you get to put down um, what, what areas you like to work at. Yeah. Um, I put down uh, the console and tabletop uh, gaming area, and just being one of the ushers at stage two. 
That works. It's like, eh, they're pretty medial jobs. I don't have to do too much. Yeah. It's like, I can stand around and do nothing. Excellent. <laughs> uh, nah, I wouldn't want to be a volunteer there. Then I'd have to put up with people like me coming up to me all the time, and I really can't tolerate that. It's bad enough putting up with me as it is. So. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, definitely looking forward to both of those. Um, yeah. Oz Comic Con's next. Supernova is in November, so there's plenty of time for Supernova to drop more bombs. Um, but Oz Comic Con is really... To me, Oz Comic Con was the one that always had the big name stuff. Supernova was always the one that had the secondary characters. But that is starting to change. Um, Supernova's definitely picked their game up since Oz Comic Con came to town. So, yeah. It's nice seeing a bit of... A, a bit of competition. Yeah. I'd say friendly rivalry, but... Oh, it's fuck friendly. Yeah. So friendly is not quite the right word. Rivalry, yes. So, anyway, let's move on from that and see, um, let's head it over to Eugene for the model report, if there is one. I forgot to ask before the show. I'm a really good host. There, there's a couple of uh, interesting tidbits I've found out about. Um, Mobius has announced some new items coming out. When they release their um, 132nd scale Oh, um, Battlestar Galactica Raptor. They will also have a accessory pack, which is the weapons pack. Nice. That will be available separately, so you so you don't have to buy two separate kits. That will be available separately, and supposedly the suggested retail on that is under twenty dollars US. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> yep, but it's a it's just a separate little add-on pack for it. Yeah. Um, Mobius, Mobius has also been doing um, some resin figures from uh, Superman and Batman. Well, they now have a Wonder Woman one coming. The um, these resin figures are expensive. They're about a hundred, hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and fifty dollars each US. But the detail on them does look fantastic. Oh, yeah. Mobius has always been really good with their details, so... Oh, yes. And Mobius does actually have a vinyl uh, model kit out that is a bit of a surprise. And you can get it as either a finished kit or an unfinished kit. And the kit is of Crypto, the super dog. <laughs> uh, so Jeff, please, please Jeff, bring Jeff, super dog into Supergirl. That would just... That would just win all of actually, everything. Actually, Supergirl had a cat. <laughs> well, if, if you go back, if, if you go back through the story, you find out she actually had a cat. Super cat. Okay, is anyone else picturing a, just a normal cat just laying around on different things and swat, and pushing stuff off shelves? But instead of just casually, gently pushing it off a shelf like a cat does, it gently nudges it and just goes off through a wall and off into the distance. Because that's what I'm picturing when I think Super Cat. <laughs> but that, that's the hobby report for today from Perry County Hobbies. Oh, sweet. Short and sweet. Um, now, one last thing. Um, they've just put the Enterprise on display at... Uh, Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... I'm... If I ever go to the States, I definitely look forward to checking that out. That looks really cool. Yeah, the... They've completely redone the model. They've, um... Got rid of the, um... Paint scheme that was on it since 91, I believe. So that it looks a lot more accurate. Um, they've also gone in and they removed all the light bulbs and replaced everything with LEDs and they moved it out of the basement gift shop and it's on the main floor near, in one of the pictures you can actually see one of the Apollo capsules nearby. So it's on the main floor of the Smithsonian. Yeah. And 
To be honest, if you went back 50, 60 years and you said, look, this thing that you're building is going to be on this floor of the Smithsonian in 2016, the main floor next to the Apollo stuff, what do you reckon those guys would say? No clue. Yeah. They probably would not believe you. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, yeah. That's really cool. I would... Oh, man, I so want to go over there. Like one of the few sucky things about being in Australia, like apart from the fact that everything tries to kill you constantly, um, is that America has so many cool things and so many terrifying things. But that's beside the point. So, yeah. Anyway. Stuart, you have 20 minutes to do the news. Well, you forgot one item on the news. Or before that, you forgot one item that we were going to cover. Oh, yeah. Totally forgot. What was that again? The petition. Oh, the, the petition. petition! Michael's petition. Wow, I can't believe I totally forgot about the petition. Especially since it's just reached Enterprise Signatures. For those who don't know, it's 1701. Um, so, uh, uh, let me... I don't actually have that up. Stuart, do you want to read the petition, or...? Take that as a no. Um, so anyway, basically what happened was, after the we aired our episode last week, Michael hit me up, and we did some work, and wrote up a letter to CBS and Paramount stating our main sort of issues with their guidelines. Now... I've since listened to a podcast where the guy that wrote the guidelines came on and explained them in far more detail. You should really check that out. That's on the... I think it's called Engage, which is the official Star Trek podcast. Um, check that out. Have a listen. The two parts I still disagree with is the use of professionals and the time limit. The rest of the stuff I'm relatively okay with because they're like... Because these... Don't around and say, like, look, these are guidelines. We're not going to sort of come after you if you break them, unless you sort of break them in every single way imaginable. Um, and the whole point of them is exactly what I said last week, is to make it so that there is a definitive line between the professional grade stuff that Paramount is doing, and CBS is doing, and the amateur stuff which the fans are doing. And right now the fan films are getting too professional for their taste. It was a, the effective end result for what they were going on about. Um, so yeah. And that was a really good listen, so make sure you check out that Engage. But anyway, the point is, we did up a, we did up a, I think it was change.org petition. It's up on Save Sci-Fi, pinned to the top, so facebook.com slash save sci-fi. And until a couple of days ago, it had about 500 signatures. And then it exploded to 1,500 in about 12 hours, and we had no idea what the hell was going on. Star Trek Axanar had shared it. <laughs> and... As a result, overnight, this thing's gone nuts, and it's sort of been holding about 100 to 200 signatures an hour since. Um, slowly sort of tapering off now. But yeah, if you want to check that out, check uh, jump on either Axanar, I think it's pinned to the top of the Axanar page, or facebook.com slash save sci-fi. It's definitely pinned to the top of our page. There's a link to the letter, and a link to the petition proper, both on the, both on the page there. Um, so make sure you check it out, have a read, and if you agree with it, sign it. Definitely. The more signatures we have, the bigger the impact it's going to have. So. And, and for those that are wondering, the letter is nothing more than an us saying, look, um, you need to sit down and talk with the people doing the fan films because these guidelines um, are crazy. They, they stifle every fan film out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I, yeah, like I said, I do understand where they're coming from with the guidelines. Doesn't mean I side with them. Like I said, there's a couple of key points I definitely disagree on. Um, but for the most part, I understand where they're coming from for the rest of them. So, um, but yeah. But definitely read the letter before your response. It is not hateful in any way shape or form it is we've intentionally wrote it so it would be calm and rational we even rewrote it about a half dozen times um to make it as neutral as possible um all the the key points are this is a severe limitation because of this reason this is a limitation because of this reason um this is why we do 
fan while we do and you should it would be really good if you sat down and had a discussion with the creators so that you guys could come to terms as a as a whole as a fan base and as a group as to where these lines should be and CBS and Paramount have been working on these guidelines for a couple of years now according to the guy but only because of um, a recent lawsuit which was Axena um, has it sort of come to a head now it's not only Axena that caused this because a lot of people blame me Axa I want to be 110% clear it is not Axena's fault the direction of fan films was becoming more and more professional if it wasn't Axena it was going to be Renegades, it was going to be Horizons, it was going to be Continues, it was going to be any of them. It's just that Axanar was the first one that was that was really, really big. The others were quite large too. It just, Axanar just happened to be at the top at, the, at that exact moment that it sort of happened. So, do not blame Axanar. Um, so, and don't blame CBS. Don't send hate messages. Don't send any of that. It's, it's a an adjustment period and we've got to sort of adjust and it's not just our side that has to adjust it's both sides so yeah anyway that's my thoughts on that Stuart yes news you got any news you want to do the news did you, you yes. got any more thoughts on the petition just really quickly nope, that's all that's all uh, cool time for the news news so yeah um so as we learned a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Flash uh, Season 3 ep- uh, return episode is going to be called Flashpoint. And there's been a lot of uh, people wondering if that's going to affect any of the other t- uh, shows, us included. So, yeah. Stephen Amell had a panel at uh, Heroes, and fan f- uh, Heroes and Villains f- uh, Fan Fest over the weekend. And um, someone asked him if Flashpoint's going to affect him. Now, this is gets where it gets interesting, because he was quoted for saying yes, but he sarcastically said yes, and then and then straight off said, I have no idea whatsoever, but people actually took that as a Confirmation. serious yes. Yeah. yeah, took that as, oh, shit's going to go down. Yeah. Because in the when Flashpoint happens, uh, in the timeline, in the in the miniseries and in the movie, um, he owns... Uh, uh, Green Arrow Industries. Yes, it's actually called Green Arrow Industries. Wow. And uh, what it is it's that it's a mil. Um, he takes military. Um, it's a military company, but they take super weapons from villains. Think, think Robin Hood, but on a much larger scale. Fair enough. And so a lot of people think that might happen, or there's another thing because a lot of people. Have been ref- have been seeing that the whole Batman and Arrow thing are kind of uh, like they've been using Arrow as the Batman. Yeah. That um, if they do the timeline swap, um, that um, Oliver's dad will be the Arrow instead of Oliver. Ooh. Since in the um, Flashpoint comics, it's Bruce's dad, Thomas, who's actually Batman. That'd be an interesting twist. Bring the dad back and have him as the Arrow for the first little bit until. The flashpoint sort of settles. We down. won't. F- we're not going to find anything out. At least for not for another couple of weeks until Comic Con. Oh yeah. Because both sh- both shows are at com- both have both shows have panels at Comic Con, include as well as Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl. So basically, all the DC shows all have their own panels. Nice. So we will be getting Ooh. a lot of news in a few weeks. Oh man, the things I would do to go to Oz Comic Con. Uh, sorry, Oz Comic Con. San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. SDC. Think yeah. Things I would do to be able to go to um, Star Wars Celebration. Oh, yeah. Which I'm going to move along to, because we now have um, panels, panel names for, um, for um, Star Wars Celebration. Ooh. We know that there is a... Um, so, Mark Hamill actually has his own panel. Ooh. Please tell me See, he's going to be Sparkly Ghost. You're going to stand him <laughs> off to the side of the stage and use like the, the age-old sort of hologram trick with a thin pane of glass and some green light to make him into a ghost. Because that would be hilarious. <laughs> See, we know, because um, we're, uh, sorry, episode 8 actually s- finishes filming on the 22nd of July, which is just after um, celebrations. So I know they'll have, I know they've got something to show. Oh, yeah. 
Now, episode eight doesn't have its own panel, so I think if they're going to do it, they'll either do it with um, Mark in the Mark Hamill, or they'll do it. Um, there's another panel at the end. I've got to look this up quickly to get the name right. Yeah. But I think they'll either do it at the beginning of it or at the end of it, because Rogue One has its own panel, so there'll be a lot of Rogue One, obviously, as because um, uh, uh, um, considering how much shenanigans is going down in the way of Rogue One, it doesn't surprise me they get their own panel. Yeah. So yeah, um, the last, the last, the closing ceremony um, is uh, the future filmmakers, and so in that panel, it's got um, Kathleen Kennedy, Pablo Hidalgo, Ryan Johnson, who's the director of Episode Eight, and then Chris Miller and Phil Lord, who are the directors of the um, Young Han Solo film. So I think they're going to drop it. It'll either be at the beginning with Mark Hamill or at the end with Ryan Johnson. Yeah, and it makes sense to maybe do a little bit of both. You want to see the rest of this? Go to this panel. That's where the other half's going to be. And everyone's going to be like, "Well, fuck you, Mark Hamill." <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a lot to do. Um, there's like there's a lot of panels. Oh yeah. As I said, Mark's got his own panel. Um, the um, uh, Carrie Fisher has her own has her own um, talk, has her own thing. Uh, Ray Park's got one as well. Darth Maul. Um, so there's a lot of the rebels have their own, obviously. So we'll get rebels news as well. So there's a lot of stuff coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, July fifteenth to seventeenth is um, is celebrations, and Comic Con is the weekend after. So nice. So it'll be it'll be a busy it'll be a busy uh, couple of weeks getting all that news down. Oh yeah. Now just really quickly, just back on the note of San Diego Comic Con, deadliest fandom is going to San Diego Comic Con. So if you want to catch up with um, Giggy Edgley and EJ and the others, make sure you check them out when you go to San Diego Comic Con. They're going to be there. They're going to have a lot of fun. I really, really wish I could be over there with them um, for so many, so many reasons. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, but just why? Why can't I be? Just want to go to one San Diego Comic Con. Damn it. Um, but right now they're calling for volunteers. So if you are in the States and you want to go to San Diego Comic Con, make sure you jump over to the Deadliest Fandom page and send us a message. Facebook.com slash the Deadliest Fandom. Um, so yeah. Eugene, you want to go to San Diego Comic Con? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, with my job right now, we won't discuss. Uh, um, everything I've got going on between now and, uh, September. That's fine. That's fine. I just, you're the only person on the podcast who's in America that might set a chance to be able to go. Michael can't go because he's got uni. Otherwise he would go. GB from HawaiiCon is going to be there. So speaking of which, Stuart, bring up the HawaiiCon guests. Because they're on at the same oh, time okay. as Comic-Con. So we haven't given HawaiiCon a shout out in a while. Um... Wait, is Hawaiicon really on the same weekend? Uh, it's one week either side. It's always it's always middle of September. So because yeah, because GB's going to um Oz Com- uh fucking Oz Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, as well. So yeah, so yeah, I've got the Hawaiicon guests up. Excellent. So we have uh. Eugene Rod Roddenberry. So we're basically Gene Roddenberry's son. Yep. Uh, we've got Nichelle Nichols, who's a, who's just one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Oh yeah. Uh, we've got Walter Koenig. Yeah. Best part about Oz Comic Con? Uh, sorry, Hawaii Comic Con. I'll get that right eventually. Best part about Hawaii Comic Con. Um, Hawaii Con whatever the hell they call it, um, is that they do all sorts of extra activities with celebrities, including swimming, snorkeling around, going for bush walks, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, you can even meet the guests in the bar after the con is over downstairs and just have a chat. So make sure you check out their page for tickets and stuff. Anyway, let's do it. Keep going with the guests. Oh, yep. So from... Uh... From... Uh... Uh, Next Gen and Deep Space Nine, we've got uh, Jonathan Frakes and Chase Masterson. Woo. Uh, moving along to Battlestar Galactic and Babylon 5. 
That seems a little out of place, but... <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Aaron Douglas, uh, Tamo Pennicut, and Patricia Tolman. Now, this is where it gets interesting. From Star Trek Voyager, we have... Um, well, this is the interesting part. Um, from Star Trek Voyager, we have um, Manu... Uh, it's right... Oh, that is a really hard name to say. It's from me? I'll figure that out later. <laughs> so he's, he's um, from uh, Voyager. From Star Trek Continues, we've got Vic Mignogna and Michelle Specht. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to get um, some feedback from them about how the fan film rules affects those guys. So yeah, um, then uh, we've got some voice actors. We've got uh, Nikki Rapp um, and K. Morrison, and obviously Vic. This Vic just does everything apparently these days. Yeah, if, if you can find a con that Vic isn't at, it's not a good con. He is at all of them. I'm pretty sure at this point there is multiple clones of him. So, yeah. <laughs> that way, he finishes a con. He hops in a plane. He lands. He hops out of the plane, he's at another con. He hops into a plane, he flies, he lands at another con. <laughs> there. So then we got a whole bunch of writers. Um, yep. Do I have to go through everyone's name? No, no, no. Just just the okay. main main celebrities. So, yeah. so make sure to check out Hawaii Con. Hawaii Con is awesome, and one of these years I'm going to go to that instead of Oz Comic Con. But not this year, because I don't have any money. Maybe next year, when it has the money. We'll get there eventually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, Thor Ragnarok has started filming. Yep, on the Gold Coast. So, I'm going to be... Um, oh, no, I can't actually mention that I'm going to be down there tomorrow. Oop. <laughs> Oops. Whoops. So, yeah, they're filming at Village Roadshow Ro Ro Studios in Oxenford. Yeah, which is <clears throat> movie world for those who live in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and I know the different areas you can actually... There's a couple of streets in behind the cinemas that are, like, really, really high. If you've got a big enough sort of lens, you can actually see in and take photos. But again, I didn't tell you that. We know nothing. We know nothing. I see, I see nothing. I know nothing. No, nothing. Oh, Hogan's Heroes. How, how much you deserve a reboot. But at the same time, it just wouldn't work. Oh, Hogan's Heroes. Moving right along. I am moving along to Samurai Jack. Okay. So, uh, Samurai Jack was an, is coming back is coming back for a final se uh, se a season this year to finish off the story. Uh, it's going to be set 50 years after the, the previous season, so big time gap. Big, big time jump. Um, but, uh, it's gonna be very, very dark. Like, dark, darker than what it was. That's impressive. Yeah. And I loved Samurai Jack growing up, so I hope they do this well. Yeah. Also, there's a really, um, there's a really interesting rumour that apparently, um, Ghost Rider might appear be appearing on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ooh. There's a, there's a bus. There's a picture that was circling um, a couple of weeks ago, um, of a bus in America that had Agents of Shield, and then it had like a, uh, um, it had Agents of Shield, and underneath it had like a flame chain, like a like like Ghost Rider's one of his chains underneath it. Ooh. And a lot of people, so there's a lot. There's a kind of a rumor going around that could be that he could come into Agents of Shield. That'd be interesting. Which, that would be very interesting. Cause I wonder how they would keep him. Um, wonder how that would work. Yeah, probably a guest spot. Uh, anyway, that's it for this week's podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Make sure you check us out at facebook.com slash save sci-fi. Facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast for your podcast related news. Facebook.com slash deadliest fandom. This week we are celebrating the 4th of July with 4th of July themed uh, versus images, including this week's one, um, today's one, which is uh, Maverick from Top Gun versus um, Lieutenant Hiller from... Independence Day in their fighters F-14 versus F-A-18 should be fun 
Uh, make sure you look us up on all the different places where podcasts live, iTunes and all that sort of stuff. Check out Perry County, Nobility, and Hawaii Con. We shall catch you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.